Hello, and welcome to Burhanam Guitars and Ukuleles. So I'm going to show you how I mix up some stain for a sunburst. These are all my various colours. <coughs> um, actually, that's spirit varnish for violin repairs. Um, most of these are either Stu McDonald or Trans Tint. These are obviously the same thing, just repackaged. Um, and they have different names too. And uh, <coughs> so, what I'm going to be doing today is mixing up some tobacco brown, which is a great color. And is the darkest um, color that I use in the sunburst usually. And then in the perimeter, I do um, add a add black to it a little bit. But this is a, a little Gatorade bottle. It's just what I use. You can use whatever you want. Um, do you know your alcohol? Now, it depends on how much you need, but I'm going to mix up however much that was. I don't measure it with drops, I measure it with looking through it and actually I'll wait until I get the lid on to show you but just how dark it appears when you swirl it around and it um, and you can see um, I'm also going to add a bit of lacquer thinners to this So it's about an inch each. Inch of alcohol, inch of lacquer thinners. And then, this is pre-mixed Cardinal Nitro. And it's about two thirds nitro and a third of lacquer thinner, about. But I'm just gonna add just a touch of this to, and I want you to see how much I put in. That was probably a touch too much, but you, you just need a, a little dash of it just to act as a binder for the color and for it to stick a bit better. If it, if it um, doesn't have the binder, it, kind of is a bit too powdery, or can be, anyway. Um, so, I just look at how dark it is in here, and, you know, you get to know This is this will be good enough, and by good enough I mean dark enough. Sometimes if I'm, well, I try and mix up the darkest version of each thing that I can, especially the dark stuff, because the dark stuff obviously goes around the perimeter of the instrument, and. That's where the you have to tape off the white purfling or herringbone or whatever uh, in order to keep that clean. And when you tape it off, 
spray the burst and then pull the tape off. There's always a, a ledge. I mean, this is not to scale, but um, you know, it's a, it can be, you know, 1 64th or something ledge. So the darker this is, the less I have to put on in order to get it to the, you know, the dark, deep color that I want. Therefore, that ledge is thinner or smaller or less tall, however you want to say it. So that's uh, it's an important thing. But it's also important to get it right. And it's probably easy when you're starting out to start with perhaps a, a less dark solution. So when you spray it, you just you're putting on very light layers uh, and building that up. And I do that too, but I, you know, I do, I don't know, 10 layers or something, 10 passes over the same area um, to build it up. I don't, like the guys who are spraying in factories, they just have a really dark mix and just do almost one pass, maybe two, maybe three passes and it's done. Um, I don't really spray bursts enough to be that confident. Um, so yeah, if you are starting out, just maybe go with a slightly thinner mix or you could, you know, try this mix and turn down on your gun, turn down the amount of <coughs> liquid that's being sprayed and uh, that's another way of, of uh, doing the same thing. Um, this stuff also mixes with water but uh, don't spray with water if you're going to spray nitro on top of it. I've also mixed it, usually mix it with just lacquer thinner. Well exactly the same thing as what I did but without the alcohol in it. That works too. Um, the last and probably most important thing is after you've sprayed all the colors and you put you're putting clear coats on, do a couple of dry kind of dust coats of clear and you just um, do that by limiting the amount of fluid going through the needle and uh, and that is a it, it ensures well minimizes uh, the all the color layers that you've just put on it minimizes the risk of all of those running and sort of turning into a motley uh, thing which is horrible to witness <laughs> if you've just painstakingly bursted you know something perfectly and then just watch it all run like kind of wax in the sun it's horrible and I've done it a few times and you know I guess we all have to learn our lesson again and again sometimes um, the, the colors I usually use just for a typical burst would be tobacco brown mix that with a little bit of black just for the very edge. Um, red mahogany is good to have uh, if you want to add that kind of red factor into the burst. Um, medium brown and vintage amber. So tobacco brown medium brown and vintage amber would, are my three go-tos and sometimes red mahogany if if the client sort of asks for a specific type of burst and when a customer says I want to burst always get a photo of the burst that they, they're talking about or they want um, because you know 
it's kind of like saying paint my guitar blue it, uh, it, how many blues are there and get a few photos just so you know that they're consistent in what they want because sometimes you'll get three photos of three different bursts um, one's way more red one's way more dark one doesn't have <coughs> one has um, well used to have red in it but the red has died you know you just have to make sure that you're delivering what they want um, and the only way to do that is to see before what they want um, so those three colors are what this guitar is I've sanded this back so it's um, it's not as dark and punchy as it would look so mostly dark this is kind of a 30s 1930s burst which is what I like actually and I can show you a real 1926 burst no 1929 burst this is a Gibson L1 um, so the center is a little bit it's a, a bit more dark than that other guitar that I just showed you um, but just have a look at old bursts and replicate them this is pretty nice I wouldn't ever spray a guitar like this because it's it's fat here and thin here and uh, yeah I don't I don't like that I like a consistent thickness of the burst so this would be kind of here if that was the case and you can see that I've done that here this is a 14 fret to the body guitar so I usually bring the burst up here which is what I like sometimes I'll go up here on like a J45 or something but here you can see that the bottom of the sound hole is completely burst free um, yeah so this isn't really a, a, a video on how to spray burst it's more just about mixing um, but inevitably I went off on a huge tangent <laughs> but for your benefit um, so I hope that helps um, if you're staining just straight staining wood um, you can either use water or alcohol with these and it just depends on how quickly you want it to dry and if you want it to raise the grain stuff like that um, alcohol dries quicker than water obviously so is I usually use water for um, bursts but I mean hand rub bursts um, but sometimes on figured woods and it's just easy to use alcohol uh, it's depending on how good you are um, on if you're spraying a burst always seal the wood grain fill seal the wood again or seal the grain fill and then clear coats and then sand as flat as you can and then spray the burst don't spray the burst on directly onto wood because um, if you screw it up you you've got to sand everything back but if you do it the other way and you're just spraying onto flat clear coats um, if you screw up the burst and, and that will happen uh, you just let it dry and scrape it back to the clear coat and then you can go again it's, it's, it's really annoying but it's actually not that hard or much of a time waster um, one of the last bursts I did, I had to re redo it three times just for various reasons. That was annoying, but, you know, that's it. Um, so I hope that was uh, a benefit to you. Um, if you like these tutorials and like 
hearing me ramble on, um, just subscribe and uh, and if you want to know anything specific, just let me know and I'll do a video on it if I can. Thank you very much. Oh, wear gloves because you know health and stuff. Peace out.